This is my 2004 Dodge Intrepid SE with the Chrysler 2.7 liter EER V6. This motor is notorious for allegedly being one of the worst motors in automotive history. But I'm making this video to explain to you that that is simply not the truth. I'm going to give you the reason why that's not true. Okay, so the first thing I'd like to point out is the engine is not the problem. It's the car's owner that is the problem. Okay. These engines are extremely sensitive to maintenance. You cannot let it go like on many cars. You got to do the maintenance one time and you got to take very tedious care of these engines. Now you can beat the shit out of them and they'll stay alive, but there's one thing, two things actually that you must do to keep these engines alive. So I'm going to start with the actual problem with the engine that is usually always the owner's fault because there is a way to prevent these engines from blowing up. Okay, so there is a defective part on these engines and one defective part only and it is the water pump which destroys 99.9% .9 of these 2.7 liter EER V6s. Now you're probably thinking how in the hell is that even possible for a water pump to destroy multiple, numerous thousands of these engines and send numerous thousands of these cars to the junkyard and make them get this reputation of being the worst, one of the worst engines ever made in automotive history? Well, the engineers really messed up with one design on this engine and that is the water pump. See, your water pump is not normal on these engines like on your average car like the Mazda KLDE and the Probe GTs, okay? It's not driven by a timing belt, it's driven by a timing chain. There's many motors that have the water pump driven by the timing chain, but that's not even the problem. The problem is with these motors is that the water pump is connected right to the crankcase and when the seal on the water pump fails it allows oil or water or antifreeze excuse me allows antifreeze to seep into the oil crankcase and it sludges up the oil and you know when an engine gets sludged up the passageways get trapped and the engine's starved of oil and your rod bearings go and the valves go, just, just, just catastrophic failure of the whole entire engine. And usually you can't even rebuild them, they're that, they're, they're that far gone, you gotta just replace the whole engine. Or get a remanufactured one from like Jasper or something. And the thing is, I have seen these motors push nearly 300,000 miles on the original engine and I'll tell you how that happened. The owner of the Intrepids changed her water pump every 70,000 miles. Okay, Chrysler recommends you change them every 100,000 but these engines are pretty much well known for the water pumps failing from anywhere from 70,000 miles to 90,000 miles. And mine here in particular has 80,000 miles, but there is no signs of the water pump going. And the other thing, which really isn't that much of a problem, is that it is highly recommended that you use synthetic oil in these engines and change the synthetic oil every 5,000 miles. Why is that? Because these engines have a very small oil capacity they don't even have a five quart capacity. It's not a design flaw, but you should still use synthetic oil with these engines. And when you use synthetic oil, you have greater chances of saving your motor if it happens to get sludged up. Now, in the early EER V6s, 
the 98 through 2001s, they had a problem with the crankcase ventilation system that um, was making the conventional engine oil break down and uh, sludge up. Now, in 2002, that was salt, and my trap here is a 2004. And um, mine has apparently always had a synthetic blend oil I use, as you can see right there. But I'm switching to full synthetic. So, how do you prevent these engines from blowing up? Change the water pump every 70,000 miles. Now, if you don't want to do that, if you uh, don't mind checking under your hood like twice a week, uh, then you don't have to change your water pump every 70,000 miles. I recommend it, but you don't really have to because there is a way to uh, notice when the water pump's about to go out and sludge your engine up and kill your entire engine. So here's what you got to do. At least twice a week, check your coolant level. Sit the car on a flat ground, and I haven't done it yet, because I just learned this trick yesterday. What I'd recommend doing is taking a permanent marker, or actually, screw that. Just take a washable marker and mark where your coolant level is, okay? And like I said, check it twice a week, and make sure when you check your coolant level, check your engine oil too. If there's any milky residue on your engine dipstick, do not start the engine, do not run it, don't drive it, um, because your chances of saving the engine, if, if the oil's all milky, if you keep running it, you keep driving it, you're gonna kill the engine really quick. There is a chance sometimes you can save your engine even if it is sludged up a little bit especially if you use synthetic oil you have the greater chances of uh, saving your engine if you use synthetic oil and if you catch it if your water pump does go out and you catch it just in time like the water pumps have a weep hole that sometimes will leak a couple drips on the ground every once in a great while but it's uh, so small of a hole that it usually doesn't leak anything when the pump's going so is uh, your number one site, your water pump, is going out and going to destroy it, milk up your engine and destroy it. Because like I said, defect the water pump design. When the seal goes in the water pump, the, um, uh, the coolant sleeps into, seeps into the engine oil crankcase and milks up the oil, destroys the entire engine. And like I said, you either have to get a completely new engine, or I mean a junkyard engine, or get a remanufactured engine. There's usually no saving them once they're uh, really sludged up. So, it's that simple. Twice a week, check your coolant. If there's any coolant missing, you know your water pump's going, and you should change the pump immediately. And I'm not saying wait until you're, it just keeps eating coolant, eat coolant, eat coolant, and then you check your engine oil one day and it's all milky. Your engine's pretty much fucked. Don't do that, okay? Don't do that. And there is one other bad thing about the water pump. And while I said earlier that you don't have to change them every 70,000 miles, which is what Intrepid owners recommend, uh, Chrysler themselves recommends every 100,000 miles, but like I said, these engines typically fail, the water pumps typically fail from 70,000 miles to 90,000 miles, so you should change them around 70,000 miles. The big risk of not changing your water pump is if the bearings go in the water pump, since it's driven by the timing chain, if the bearing sees up, it's gonna destroy your timing chain. And this is an interference engine. So your whole engine's screwed if those water pump bearings go. So that's the only scary thing. That's the only really scary thing, is even if you're not losing any coolant, okay, uh, your bearings could be shot. And they could be, um, like I said, they lock, if the bearing locks up in that uh, water pump, it destroys your timing chain and it'll just kill the whole motor interference motor so it you should change them every between i'd say 70,000 miles and 80,000 miles you should change them so that's what i'm scared about mine here it has 80,000 miles on it and i'm hoping the water pump doesn't lock up so i'm keeping close attention to my coolant and y'all i check it every single day sometimes twice a day and like I said, these engines are just very 
sense of the maintenance. You gotta use good oil, synthetic, every 5,000 miles, change your water pump every 70,000 to 80,000 miles, and you will never have a single problem with these engines, I guarantee it. These are not some weak piece of shit engines like the Chrysler 420A that just everything internal just goes on them for absolutely no reason whatsoever, no matter how good you take care of them. Or the Ford uh, 2.0 SPI and the Focus and Escorts that drop valve seats for absolutely no reason at all, no matter how good you take care of them. These engines are just maintenance, 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 maintenance. And you can beat the piss out of them and they'll keep running. You just gotta take care of that water pump and you got to use synthetic oil. It is that simple. These are not bad engines at all. They're actually very good engines, very advanced engines for their times considering they were designed in 1994 and were being uh, designed for, you know, and uh, refined for multiple years or a couple years before they actually uh, installed them in the, in the Intrepids. So they are good motors. There is plenty of proof of many of them um, pushing almost 300,000 miles in the original engine, ones that had the water pump chains and synthetic oil used. So before you trash these Chrysler 2.7 liter EER V6s again, um, just remember what I said. And that is the honest truth. So to all you Intrepid and Sebring owners out there and Stratus owners with this engine, take good care of your engines and they'll take good care of you. And everybody else watching this video that has trashed these engines before. I wouldn't trash them anymore because you just learned something. All right, everybody. This is a PGT24 signing off. Thank you for watching.